online and went viral and supposedly became famous and they made him a president. Well, people got inspired by this zero and they thought, well, maybe he's gonna do that in real life. So let's elect him a president. So Olomoisky, that Jewish oligarch, started sponsoring Zelensky's campaign. And he was, I understand why people fell for his promises, because his, he was really running as peace candidate. Uh, people were getting tired of the war, so they were like, he was promising to end it. He was promising he's going to um, obey, like listen to the Minsk agreements. He's not going to break the ceasefires. And unfortunately, he didn't keep any of his promises. When he became president, he even tried to go there and talk to those guys in trenches. They put him down so easy. They told him, who are you? A clown. Like there's yeah. a video of yeah. these Nazi guys calling Zelensky a clown. <laughs> 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 so he couldn't do anything. I don't know, he wanted to do something and they didn't allow him. Or from the beginning, this was just a show. Mm -hmm. He was just playing another role. He thought it's the season five of his yeah. Servant of the People. <laughs> Isn't that and also the name of his party? Yeah. I'm sorry? The name of his party is yes, also. Yes, yeah. his yeah. party. And he brought people that he was, you know, the comedians that were working together with him, he brought them into his cabinet. So oh the whole God. cabinet, people were joking you they're like, oh, we're going to laugh a lot for the next five years. <laughs> 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 because the whole cabinet is a comedian. Yeah. I just wanted to add also, uh, I remember when Zelensky was elected and I was in Lugansk and Donetsk at the time and I have to say, Donbass fell for him too. They, they, were, they were in love with Zelensky at the beginning. They thought he was, they, they was going to be the end of the conflict. Yeah. <laughs> yes, did we know? 73 <laughs> people voted for him. That's a lot. Usually it's like 40 over 50, right? It's like they're, they're bordering the two candidates, like, uh, and Zelensky was, I think, one of the only who ever got like 73%. That's yeah. that, that's that's huge. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, so even before Zelensky came to power in Ukraine, the anti-communist uh, movement started growing. You know, they were they started eliminating everything communist. So um, they banned communist, communist symbols. In 2015, um, they passed a law that you can go to jail for something like selling USSR souvenirs, like if you have any, like, you know, any souvenir, um, you can go to jail for five years. Also, um, if you want to, like, sing uh, Soviet anthem, that's also banned. Um, it's criminal offense if you do not denounce communism. So if you're, like, saying you're pro-communism, you're criminal, automatically. <laughs> So I would be in jail if I was in Ukraine now. <laughs> yeah, so it's basically like ban on free speech. And um, also, on the other hand, they made it a criminal offense if you say that Bandera and those uh, Nazi collaborators were actually Nazi collaborators. So you can't, you can't say it out loud that they were the bad guys. Um, officially, in Ukrainian history books, and as a narrative, they are independent spiders. <laughs> <laughs> and also, in the past five years, streets started being renamed. Um, like, I think 50, 000, over 50,000 streets um, were renamed from, like, there were Stalin Street, Lenin Street, anything that was related to communism, even Gagarin. So, G Gagarin wow. Street. They started getting rid of the guy in feet. <laughs> and right now, I mean, they replaced it with Shukhevich, Pandera, and others. <laughs> oh <my God>. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny, they started removing uh, all the monuments, and there was, a, there was a poll done in 2016 where they were asking people, do you approve all these changes? And majority of people, over 50% of people said, no, it's nonsense. Keep it the way it is. It's history. So Ukrainians don't even agree with that, but they keep on going, they keep on changing. Instead of fixing potholes, they're changing the name. Like, what's the use for that? <laughs> and also, ever since the um, special military operations started, they really went after the workers. So because there's a martial law imposed in, um, in Ukraine right now, no demonstrations are allowed. Uh, unions um, that represent workers from small and medium Corporations, which account for like 80% of the whole Ukraine, 
they can't bargain, they can't negotiate their uh, terms of work. So um, workers basically have to just put up with this fascist regime and, and wait when they're going to be drafted. Because um, this is what the democratic Ukraine looks now, uh, right now. It's uh, opposition parties are prohibited. Um, no elections. Zelensky will be the yeah. forever president. Yeah. <laughs> Ukrainian police um, just arrests everyone who has a critical opinion. Um, Neo-Nazi gangs just rule the streets. They can do whatever they want because they're independence fighters. Um, churches are being taken over. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you heard about Kivo Pecherska uh, Lavra or Louvre, I'm not sure how to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they just took over it and they kicked out the priests. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, people are tied to lampposts. I'm sure you've seen pictures like that. Uh, men are being pulled out of cars. Buses are being stopped by police. And police goes in and gets every man out and checks their papers. And if they're old enough or healthy enough to go fight, they send them to fight. Um, so I was born in USSR, but I was growing up mostly when it was independent Ukraine, and it's just, it hurts so much to see how it changed. It went from this beautiful country where Russian-speaking, Ukrainian-speaking people were living in peace and harmony, and now they are the biggest enemies. They're fighting, um, and they want to, you know, especially the, the Westerners, they just hate everything Russian. And they call them terrorists, and they want to exterminate them. Um, and it's just basically like, Fascism is spreading like a cancer, you know? So I often ask this question when it makes me sad, you know, the situation in my home country. I feel like if, you, if anyone gets cancer, who are, like, who are we gonna be mad at? The surgeon who's cutting out the tumor or the cancer? So that's how I look at the situation in Ukraine right now.